Hey everyone, come see me live on tour in Palm Beach, Florida, Morris Plains, New Jersey, Cleveland, Ohio, Nashville, Tennessee, Austin, Texas, West Bend, Wisconsin, Kansas City, Missouri, and more. Get tickets and new merch at jeremiahwatkins.com. And come see Stand Up on the Spot every second Tuesday of the month at the World Famous Comedy Store in Los Angeles. Like this Tuesday, with Jody Sweeten, Harlan Williams, Frankie Quinones, Tony Baker, and more. And New York City, we're coming to you on March 26th with Dan Soder, Corinne Fisher, Joe List, Louis J. Gomez, and surprise guests. Get tickets at jeremiahwatkins.com. Thanks. Hey you, are you subscribed to the show yet? How about we fix that today? And while you're here, why don't you leave a like and a comment? All right, that's enough. Thanks so much for the support. Now please enjoy Stand Up On The Spot. Florida, how we doing tonight? What's up, everybody? My name is Jeremiah Watkins, and I'm your host of Stand Up on the Spot. This is how the show works. We, the comedians, are coming up here with no prepared material. We're going to ask you guys, the audience, for suggestions. You're going to yell stuff out. We're going to create Stand Up on the Spot based off those suggestions. Who's ready to kick it off right here, right now? What do you say, huh? <laughs> this is a serious production show. I mean, we there's, there's haze. <laughs> there's fog on half the stage. This is a serious production show. Let's get into this right now. Do I look freaking cool now, dude? I'm going to sing Kiss from a Rose right now. Okay, what do we got? Um, uh, let's see, what kind of suggestion we got? Miami Aliens. Miami Aliens? Is that a Mexican guy yelling that out? <laughs> dude, I'm, I'm ready to rock with this crowd. Talk about my people, bro. <laughs> Miami Aliens, man. I, at first I was like, is that a sports team? And I was like, what? the Miami Aliens? That would be cool if that was like the logo of like a Mexican dude like lifting another Mexican dude up, like, like running, you know? That, like, that'd, that'd, that'd be a cool mascot for the team, right? The Miami Aliens. They're in a UFO, but it's in the shape of a pickup truck. <laughs> heck yeah, dude, heck yeah. Uh, what else we got? Maybe over here. 90s hip hop. 90s hip hop, okay. My, my coochie pink, my booty hole brown. That's the hip hop that we're working with these days. We're back in the 90s, like, like maybe they'd be murdering that pussy, but they wouldn't just be like, like, this is the color of what it is right now. So you just need to know that if you hook up with this, this is the color palette that you're gonna be getting at the Lowe's Home Improvement of Popping that thing. <laughs> uh, let's grab another suggestion over here. WAP. WAP? Thank you. Um, for my white people in here, a uh, beautiful black woman just yelled WAP at me, which means wet ass pussy. So, um, how wet is too wet, though? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? I will say that there, like, you don't want it overly, like, you don't want to feel like you're sliding around. You want, you want a, a, a good amount of moistness down there. You still need friction. You still need friction, that's what it is. If it's just like, just like liquid, just, just like sliding around just all over it, there's nothing like, you're just like, I'm not even getting off right now. I'm just like dipping it in a hot tub. <laughs> That's all it feels like. You know, like guys will know this exact moment. When you step into a hot tub, there's that moment where you're like, ah, where it like encompasses your penis and your balls, right? But after a while, it doesn't feel good anymore because you're just like, it's just kind of floating around in here. So you don't want to hook up with a woman that is, is like so wet down there that you're just like, am I, is anything happening anymore? I just feel like I'm just kind of floating around down here. Kind of strange. So friction is key, exactly. I'll go dry over super wet, I really will. Cause you can always wetten it up. But you can't like, like, like let's get the vacuum in here, let's dry this thing out. I'm just like, it's like trying to like get it out, like spitting the venom out, like. I was not planning on getting this dirty guys, okay? These suggestions are really gnarly, really up towards the top, all right? Where do we go from here? Let's ground it back up, we'll build it back up. 
Uh, let's grab one more suggestion, maybe. Ikea. Ikea. You ever get lost in there? You ever live in there for three months? You ever raise a family in there? You ever invite friends over and you're like, this is my home? You ever dodge the employees there because you're like, I live here, you don't? You ever say, hi, Carl, you get to know the employees and they're, they're your new family? You ever do that? Ikea's a fun spot. Swedish meatballs all day or day. Do you go, okay, do you guys take Swedish meatballs or do you take the hot dogs at Costco? Which one? Costco, Costco hot dog? Hmm, probably. I would live in a Costco over, a, over an Ikea for sure. Because Ikea is fully furnished, but oh, what are you going to do after that? <laughs> sure, you can probably get lost so deep in an Ikea that you have a masturbation den. Sure. <laughs> But in Costco, what are you gonna eat after you complete, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Guys, who's ready to kick this thing off? What do you say, huh? <laughs> Your next comedian coming to the stage, uh, one of my favorite personals to watch out uh, in New York City. Uh, you may have seen his special on YouTube. You may have seen him on The Tonight Show. Please welcome the great Colm Turrell to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, come on. <laughs> Give me up for Colm. <laughs> Give it up for Jeremiah. Come on, let him hear it. All right, this cue to smoke. <laughs> nice, all right, let's rip the dick off this, all right? So you guys got to be good. This is, a, this is a high pressure. I cannot bomb. This is, if any of these riffs are bad, it's because of you, all right? This is a, one of the rare opportunities when I can truly blame the audience. But I'm from Ireland, by the way, just in case you're wondering what's, what type of problem I have. <laughs> All right, shout out your shit. Come on, let's hear you. Steroids. Steroids? Nice, steroids. I went to the, uh, everyone down here is on steroids, are they? I went to the gym yesterday. It's just all 70 year old men, just fucking, <laughs> just the most jacked men of all time. Does steroids make your balls small? Is that really a thing? Yes. Interesting. Uh, my balls are already pretty tiny. <laughs> Which is good because it matches my cock. <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> it's fine. Five and a bit. Five and a bit is good. But my nuts are pretty pathetic. I wish I had big fucking good, good ones. But mine are like, they're little, they're delicate. They get sensitive if you look at them. But get on the roids. Everyone's on the roids. Just getting jacked. We live in a weird world now. Everyone's getting their fake hair, you know? Fake hair, jacked. It's just, just grow old. Just be a fucking, just grow old in peace. At what point, how big do you gotta be? All right. <laughs> what else we got? That was some killer steroids. Hot toddies. Hot toddies? Any suggestions, folks? <laughs> Anyone to shout out? Bad tattoos? Okay. Vast majority of tattoos are bad. Right? Isn't that, I've got, I've got two tattoos, both of them are terrible. I will not show you them. I do have, on my tit, I have carpe diem. Which, in my defense, in, no. <laughs> this is going on YouTube. Um, in my defense, carpe, Irish people are stupid. So they don't, they've never heard the expression. It's not common. Like people in Ireland see carpe diem and they're like, what's that, about fish? What's that? And I, I was young, I was like 17. I was like, yeah, seize the day, swim with dolphins or whatever, optimistic horse shit. It's not like I wake up and I see it and then I go, oh, fucking time to do cool shit. Let's bungee jump. I just look at it and go, what a fucking idiot. But I didn't, in America, it's corny. I had no, I, I, I slept with an American girl one time, I took off my shirt and she laughed. And yeah, cause she saw the carpe diem. She was like, all right, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna get a cover up with YOLO. 
Some people have uh, neck tattoos. That's a, that's a good way to let people know you don't like working. Um, also, I have a stick man on my dick, or beside my dick. That's not where my dick is, but you know. I have a little stick man that I did, what I got on acid, which is a bad, don't ever get tattoos on acid because you think it looks good because you're on fucking acid. And then when you sober up, you go, why did I mark my body for life? All right, what else we got, folks? Come on. Irish whiskey. Of, oh, oh, lucky fucking charms. <laughs> Catholics. Catholics? All right, Catholics is good because that's the correct religion. Um, sorry if you're wrong. Um, Catholicism is fucking good. It's nice. You know what I don't like? I, I was going to church here in America and it wasn't a priest. I didn't realize the guy wasn't a priest. He was like a, just a, a guy. Like a priest is connected to God. And then this guy was talking. He was like a sermon or what, was, what is he? A deacon? No. A pastor, yes, he was a pastor. And I didn't realize he's talking about God, blah, blah, blah. And then he goes, he did some anecdote about his wife. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're fingering someone? You're not. You don't know anything about Jesus. Go home and eat your wife's pussy. That's insane. Real men of God are celibate and molest kids. That's, that's who knows Corinthians. Not this guy eating pussy. You don't know shit. Catholicism's also great because they have the old, uh, the old uh, just apology. It's the best thing ever. You can just, they have rules where you go to hell for certain things, but as long as you just say sorry, so your whole life you can just be ripping fucking coke and, and killing kids and in the clan or whatever. And then right before your deathbed you go, sorry, straight up there. Imagine going up there and hanging out with your rape victims. I apologized right at the finish line. I got in there. I went to see Joel Oldstein in Houston. That was fun. Woo, praise Jesus. It was interesting. It was a 7,000 seater. There was like 4,000 people there. <laughs> Loser. He was all right, and he's a sec. <laughs> it's a good show. It was a good show. And then they show you, they just show you videos of crippled kids. That's like most of the show is just like, yo, here's a, we have a little plate. <laughs> we have a little sizzle reel of crippled kids. Do you want to give us money? And then I like Googled how much he's worth, and I go, no. You give the crippled kids your money. All right, what else we got here? Overdosing. Overdosing. Um, sorry for you who lost. <laughs> sorry, sorry to remind you guys about your eldest son. Sorry. <laughs> Overdosing. Is that a good way to go or a bad way to go? Like, are you just like, yeah, and you, or is it, no, 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 no. I don't mind. I, I did a lot of coke last night. Some guy just gave me coke. So I did it. Because what else are you supposed to do with it? What if there was fentanyl in that and I gave it to someone else and then that person died? You think I'm gonna have that on my conscience? So I did every last bit alone in a hotel room. As cool as it gets, baby. Just me and St. Pete and just inventing new apps. Um, all right, what else we got? All right. Irish whiskey. Uh, all right. Um, you said, the, the, have I ever kissed the Blarney Stone? So the Blarney Stone, if you don't know, 
There's an old castle in Ireland, a real castle, not your gay American castles where they built them in 1982. Every now and again, they're like, hey, there's a castle in Boston. And it was just some guy, like they, they have a video recording of them building the fucking thing. But the Blarney Stone, it's, a, it's an old castle. And the, the myth is that there's, there's like a hole in the castle at the top. And if you hang upside down, you can kiss the stone and it'll give you the gift of the gab, which means you talk a lot. And it's specifically designed for gullible, stupid Americans to give us your hard-earned money. Also, if you didn't have herpes, it's the gift of herpes. That's what the, the gab means herpes. Also, don't ever kiss the stone because young boys piss on it because it's funny to piss on a stone and then charge some fat fucking Midwest wobble goblin to hang upside down and mm -hmm. By the way, you can't even piss on the stone. Like you can't piss directly on the stone. You need to piss into a cup, hang down and splash it. The ingenuity of these kids fucking up your trip to Ireland. All right, that's all from me. I think Jeremiah is gonna come back out now. I believe. Yes. Keep it going for Colm Turrell, everybody. Come on. That was yeah. fun. Heck yeah. All right, so we're gonna take some suggestions together and see what we can do with them. So uh, what do we got? Electric cars. Electric cars. Yeah. You into them? <laughs> Love them. <laughs> Do you know what's weird about the electric cars is, uh, have you ever been in a Tesla and somebody's like showing you how fast it can go? Yeah, they go yeah. yeah you instantly are like, whoa, whoa. Like with, yeah. with normal mechanical cars, it's like a ramp up. And um, yeah, that's pretty wild, huh? <laughs> <laughs> My problem is this is, are they gonna st is there like an iOS system in these cars where upgrades and then next thing you know your brakes don't fucking work so you gotta get a new version of the car? Uh, the more electronics, the worse your life is. Yeah. Also, what's gonna stop some little hacker from taking over your car? Yeah, driving you into a target. <laughs> That's like your worst case scenario. I was like, no, no, it took me to target. <laughs> no, I don't wanna go in. I'm the Burlington guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the dog is slowly walking towards you, Bullseye or whatever his name is. Yeah. <laughs> but they're watching. Tesla got in trouble for watching. That they were they were watching people through the cameras. I mean, if if you don't think they were actually being watched or listened to, like by like the Alexas and all that stuff, it's yeah. too weird. Like I'll be talking about pretzels, and all of a sudden I'll get an ad for pretzels. I'm like, yeah. they make ads for pretzels. <laughs> like it does. <laughs> it's so obscure. It doesn't make sense. I get dick pills. <laughs> so I don't, know what I, I don't know what they know about me, but I, I'm often... Do I, here's a question. Do rich people get advertised like Ferraris and stuff? I've never seen a Ferrari advertised. And is that just because I'm not in the world of... They don't even waste right. it on my timeline? Yeah, it, it probably is like on a rich person's timeline, it's like only $259.99. Like, like... <laughs> yeah, they're like selling Epstein's Island and stuff. <laughs> There's just like, there's children for sale and rich people still. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I was just talking about how I want to f kids the other day. My phone's listening. And all of a sudden, it's right like there on my, on my Instagram. It's crazy. This is creepy. That's creepy. That's weird. <laughs> you know what? They're listening to us. I don't like that. What an invasion of privacy. Somebody's got to stop them, okay? Pers personal conversation with my most elite friends. <laughs> There's always got to be that one person in the, the elite friends group who hasn't quite gotten as rich, who are just like listening and like, oh, you guys do things a little differently than I do. Yeah, or the, the guy who just now found out that they were all doing that and he never got invited and he has like FOMO type of thing. Yeah. 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 FOMO from the Chomos. Or what about these elites or celebrities that were like, oh, I'm worried I might be mentioned. And then the other guys are like. No one's mentioning you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like when like, low-level comics talk about being like shadow banned. That's why sure. they're not doing well. And you're like, no, you're just not doing well. You're just, it's just not good. Yeah, yeah. so some guys are like, yeah, I might be, I actually might be mentioned in the Epstein list, so. Yeah. <laughs> I got some things coming out that I'm working on at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your agent goes, we got to get you on this list. Listen, like, this is the top list of comics to watch right now. 
Okay? <laughs> Top 10 businessmen to watch yeah, yeah. with your kids. <laughs> uh, let's grab another suggestion. DJs. DJs and what else? DJs and snow. <laughs> okay. All right. Did you, uh, uh, you grew up in Ireland, right? Grew up in Ireland, yeah. Did you guys have uh, a lot of snow in the winter there? I grew uh, up in Kansas City and we got all the seasons. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, we did, but every few, uh, every like fourth winter it would be snowing. And then the, the country would just shut down for like two months. Oh, we, wow. One year we ran out of salt. So we had to order salt from Germany. It was like a big thing and we were tracking the salt. We we're all wow. just trapped in our houses because of a blizzard. That's like a legit third world problem right there. <laughs> we ran out of salt. We don't know what to do. There's nowhere to put it on the roads or anything They're right like, now. Please do not waste salt on your food. <laughs> yeah. We all had to band together and have bland, blander food. Just when you talk about food, couldn't get any worse. Yeah, yeah. yeah, a black person's on vacation there. They're like, this is my hell. <laughs> this is my target. <laughs> Uh, let's grab uh, one last suggestion. Storming the Capitol. Storming the Capitol. More white topics like snow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Got on that, that pony and ride it to the ground. One of the best days of my life. And I regret nothing. <laughs> Leading the charge. Facial hair. What's that? Facial hair. Facial hair? Yeah. You, okay. <laughs> Can you grow? You, uh, yeah, facial hair. Um... Bad facial hair. Good facial hair. <laughs> All right, keep giving us different facial hair. Fucking yeah, yeah, diff just different hairs. Oh, uh, uh, pubic hairs. <laughs> what are they gonna do with that one? That's wild. You a clean-shaven guy? Uh, on my face. You know oh, what I'm talking about. That's it. Um, a little bit. I like it. I, I don't want to go crazy clean. Right. But like just a little. I want, you, I want what women clean. All right? You want Disgusting. what? Disgusting. I want the women fucking... Oh, you want them clean? I want that thing just pristine. <laughs> you could... Like a marble statue? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> like like they, they show it on a commercial for like wipes, you know, where it's like 99% <laughs> of the bacteria is gone. Just Dude, wah. I know exactly what you're talking about. The countertop that has like sludge <laughs> on it. And then I was like, well, wait I, no more. Wait no longer. Are you sick of those dirty, hairy... Uh, I know I am. Yeah. No, I like it just nice, neat, fucking, like a, like a paper cut on a newborn baby's chin. That's what I'm looking for. So if any of you have one of them, hit me up. Does anybody have uh, any contacts to Epstein Island? <laughs> <laughs> guys, give it over Cole Turo. Thank everybody. you very Come much, on. guys. All right, how's the energy doing? We building in here, we feeling better? You guys get the show, it's fun, right? Heck yeah. Your next comedian coming to the stage, uh, I absolutely love this guy, he's got an amazing podcast called The Stevie Weeby Show. He's my scissor brother for life. Please welcome the amazing, my brother and yours, Stevie Weeby, ladies and gentlemen, come on. Stevie Weeby. Where my scissor siblings at? You guys ready to do some scissors? Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is my whole set. And nine, 10, we're doing 100, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, that's good. Thanks for coming, y'all. Hey, give it up for Ireland, huh? I the Irish is here. You don't want to fuck with the Irish. They'll drink you under the table and kick your ass. You don't want to fuck with them. Conor McGregor? Yeah. All right. So you guys know the format, huh? You guys want to get it going, or what's the deal? South Korea? Kim Jong-un? That's all I got to say to that. Wait, hold up. South Korea? Kimchi? Margaret Cho? Steven Yoon? Is that good enough? All right, let's move on. Holy shit. What? Pandas. Pandas? Uh, next. What was that? The Grinch. I like that. What'd you say? 
That was a very unique experience for me at Arizona State. I once took acid and I saw dead people in my bathroom, dorm room, and I thought that I was in purgatory. So thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, yeah, I worked, uh, are there Circle Ks out here? Okay, so I used to work graveyard shift at Circle K, and I bought a sheet of acid off my friend Lan, and we caught, went back to my dorm room, and we dropped it, and then we bought Sunny Delight, some Newport cigarettes, start break dancing in the dorm room. We're playing Portishead on a boom box. I had to take a shit, went into the bathroom, and I saw the ground move on me, and that's when I saw the dead people. I like that. Next. I, I don't want to get in, into politics, so next. Wait, 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 what was that? Bravolos, Bravolos, what was that? I don't really know much about insane, is it insane clown posse? I like their makeup. Um, they remind me of like, kind of like Pennywise, but they have goofy clothes, kind of like this. I don't even know why I did this, but I did it, okay? You like, you like um, Insane Clown Posse? No. Okay, then why did you even bring it up, motherfucker? <laughs> Jesus. Next. Uh, oh, that is so stereotypical. <laughs> math. Yeah, I got the Asian stereotype, man. I'm not good at math, to be honest with you. I, 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 when I went to ASU, I was still taking high school algebra. So, next. <laughs> Holy shit. In flashbacks of Arizona Broken State. Condom. Cooking condom? Broken condom? Broken condom? <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> Where's this guy? Where is he located, man? Do we need to call the sheriff's department? <laughs> Broken condom. <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> Undies to the side. <laughs> I won't get canceled, man. <laughs> I'm just out there on the second terrace. Broken condom. There's semen inside. Oh, broken condom. It happened once with me and I was with a Brazilian lady. I know. And dude, this was a nightmare. And you know, we went to this place called Bossa Nova, had a nice dinner. I got the skirt steak. And uh, yeah, we had sex. And I must have got soft during intercourse and the condom got stuck inside her vagina. And so I didn't know how to like navigate through all that. And I just remember afterwards, it was the most awkward experience because she was like, why did you do it? Why did you do it? And I'm like, why did I do it? And then, oh my God, this is, why are you guys bringing this shit up? I had to go to, I had to, go to Rite Aid and get that, what's that thing, the um, plan B. And that shit was so fucking expensive. I'm like, I went up to the clerk, I'm like, yeah, it's gonna be like $19.99. And then this shit was like $47.59, and I'm like, shit, might as well just have a kid. <laughs> my nuts inside, you know, my sperm, my DNA is already there. Have a half Korean, half Brazilian kid. All right, let's keep going, huh? With Korean families? <laughs> Family holidays with Koreans? It doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, like my mom's, I guess, concept of Christmas is just making kimchi stew and talking about BTS. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Next. Foreskin? Foreskin? <laughs> Foreskin. Foreskin. I'm circumcised, but sometimes, because like I've seen. <laughs> I've gotten somewhat jealous of, like, you know, like you're in the locker room or, you know, you've seen the dude with the foreskin, and their dicks are normally bigger, so, and they have the extra stretchy. You know, they got like a nice little scarf they get, you know? There's like more to work with there. You know, as far as like um, sexual dexterity, you know, and 
I, I envy that, you know? And, and I'm sure, like, when you masturbate, you could just, you know, touch the foreskin, and it's like a flap, and I'm sure there's, like, a lot of fun involved with that. Um, yeah, mine's, it looks like a foreskin, but, <laughs> but uh, it's the size of a foreskin, but it's not quite a foreskin. It's just my normal penis, so let's keep going. Boobs. What was that? Boobs. I mean, you, you basically just said it, period. <laughs> Boobs, period. Let's move on. <laughs> Vegas? Ooh. Yeah, I went through identity theft. Who's, is, are you the same person that brought up the other shit? <laughs> You're, like, you kind of know me. You're like, bringing up, like, bad memories. <laughs> yeah, I went through identity theft in Las Vegas. Um... I, my brother and I were sharing a hotel room and he wanted to masturbate and he was like, dude, you gotta get your own room, bro. I'm like, what do you mean? I thought I could stay with you. Nah, dude. I need my space, get your own room, bro. So I'm like, all right. So I go to the lobby, it was at Harris Casino and I gave him my card and um, next thing you know, like a month later, um, I was working at Jamba Juice and I tried to get $20 out and um, I had to call Bank of America and they took out like $300. And I was like trying to explain to them like, I was never there, I was there a month ago. They're like, no, Mr. Lee, you're at uh, Caesar's Palace. Caesar's Palace at this date. And I'm like, I had, to, um, I had to convince my manager Dwight to like call Bank of America. It was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> give me a heart attack, dude. You really give me anxiety. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, let's stick with this side of the room. <laughs> Holy shit, identity theft, fucking bad acid trips. Vegan. Vegans, I'm not against it. Um, I like flavor in my food. Um, how do you get your protein? It's like coconuts and, um, but you, could, you could eat taters, right? Okay, I'm sorry. I, I respect it though, I, you know, you know, I like the Thai places. Are you vegan, sir? Me? No. Okay. <laughs> it's the, the insane clown posse effect. <laughs> vegan. Insane clown posse. It's like, what the fuck's happening? Let's keep it going. New Year's. New Year's? Okay, next. Uh, <laughs> huh? Modern dating. Oh. Ooh, God. Do we have to go enter the red pill in here? Do we have to enter the manosphere? For Asian men? Or just for men in general? Both. For both? It's very hard for Asian men, ma'am because they don't even look at us on the dating sites. So, yeah, there's just, we're not even there, yeah. But it's okay, unless you're Steven Yoon. So if Steven Yoon was on uh, Tinder, he would get all the pussy, <laughs> period. Okay, and Hyo Sin, uh, Hyun Moon Soo, or whatever the guy, the guy that plays soccer for uh, Tottenham Hotspurs, he would get all the pussy. Um, but uh, yeah. Unless you're a Giga Chad, a Giga Chad is a person that's six foot four, six, he has abs, um, a six figure income, looks like Brad Pitt, according to the Manosphere. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna wrap it up. You guys having fun? Woo! All right, I'm gonna bring my scissor brother, Jeremiah, back on stage. Thanks for coming through. There's more people coming on. Keep it going for Stevie Weeby, ladies and gentlemen. I love this guy. Love this guy right here. Come to our Scissor Bros podcast live on Sunday. Thank you. All right, let's see what uh, uh, did you? Uh, let's see what we can do together. Did you purposely? Uh, do yeah, the, I don't know why I did it. The it bike was a stupid choice. The bike thing? Yeah, I don't know why I did it. I'm hey, regretting it. You do you? Man. I was baiting him. I wanted him. To, I wanted him to go Wu Tang Clan. <laughs> so I was baiting. They never took the bait. No, it's okay. It's too late. <laughs> I feel like a fool. Uh, let's grab a uh, suggestion, see what we can do. Roaches. AI and lotions? Roaches. Roaches? Oh, roaches. So when I lived off Hollywood Boulevard, I had colonies of roaches, and I tried every single repellent. And when you go to Chinatown, there's a specific chalk. It will kill everything. All of the roaches, their family, their the uncles, their aunts, everyone. Papa, dies. Papa roach, everything. <laughs> any kind of roach, it just knocks out any kind of roach. It's very, very, very yeah. impressive. Yeah. 
<laughs> so that's you, a good one. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So okay, so you, you bought it. So I bought it, and I kind of did a zigzag thing on all the corners, and um, they were in my stove too. So I like put it around there by the fridge, and then within a day and a half, all gone. Because I think there's an ingredient in there where they take it back to the colony, and it kills everything. It's great, and it's only fifty cents for a piece of chalk. Yeah. I think it's banned in the U.S. now, like, because the Chinese got mad or. Uh, I feel like that's like basically like bringing home a toxic boyfriend or girlfriend for Christmas. Like you slowly see it like rippling through the family. Like we don't like this. I don't know what's happening right now between us, but something's off. <laughs> Holidays. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's grab another suggestion. What do we got? Asian parents. I'm gonna let you take this one, brother. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's the obvious choice. No, I've got no, some no. thoughts. I've got we some need, thoughts on Kansas Asian City parents, for this, brother. <laughs> we need some Kansas City for this takeover. No, no. No, no. I don't want to do the obvious thing. I want to have your take on it. Yes. You want my take on Asian yes. parents? And I want you to do the Chinese voice. <laughs> Who wants to hear the Chinese voice, y'all? Can't let him down, bro. Dude, you are everything you say. You keep slowly drifting away, where you're slowly just gonna like fade into nothing. It's like, do the Chinese voice, do the Chinese voice, motherfucker. No, I'm not doing that. But uh, oh, sorry, Florida, to disappoint you, idiots. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Gonna get myself canceled for 80 people in Florida. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, idiots. What the frick? They're not filming it, though. They're not filming it. I'm filming the, it. You're, this oh, is part of the series. It. Can but you imagine no, me filming no, this is, and then me we, self-releasing no, 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 that and be like, now no, no, this no, is the clip no, that Steve and no, I are going to put out no, together. Because no, 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 no. we, we got it. the suggestion of Asian parents <laughs> and Jeremy. And this goes a little something like... <laughs> we get edited out. We have the power for, as far as the editorial. Steve, quit. He, okay, I've been doing a podcast with this guy for years. And then all of a sudden we'll have a guest on. Sometimes we have some guests that are somewhat notable. They've been doing like big movies or TV or whatever. And then Steve will get this glimmer in his eyes like, hey, Jeremiah. I love the Chinese How about you do the Chinese voice now? He, you know what? He got addicted because I bent and I did it for him one time when cameras weren't rolling. And then he's like, I got to have me some more Chinese voice. Who here has heard it? Nobody has, you oh, idiot. No, stop. Heard it. Stop <laughs> asking. Okay. I'll stop. I'll stop. Thank you. Oh, you Thank you. Once. You got to hear it once. So Asian parents. I just go, I just go right into it right there. <laughs> I, I don't know, dude. All, all I know about Asian parents is like they seem very strict compared to white parents sometimes. Like I had strict white parents, so they could have been Asian. You know, like I, I like I got disciplined. I got the belt from my dad. I think we share that. Like we like. Oh yeah, beatdowns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know. Yeah, maybe I can't. Maybe I, yeah. maybe I can do the action. They'll, they'll invent their own weapons. They'll like have a some kind of what string with the, a spike on it. And what were some of the weapons that uh, oh, your dude. dad used? S straight aggression, dude. Aggression, vigilante style. Yeah. Well, can you go into more detail? Like a ruler with nails and fucking a string attached and all kinds of shit, bro. Now Genghis Khan shit. Genghis Khan shit. Now that's some Asian yeah. parent stuff that yeah. I can't. <laughs> there you go. My dad would just use yeah. like the belt buckle <laughs> yeah. uh, and, the, and oh, the belt. Oh yeah, he did beat you uh, in Missouri. I felt so bad for you. We did a, we did a live yeah, podcast dad, together where that was the punishment for this challenge yeah, I lost. dad beat him on stage. He welcomed my dad on stage and he his hit me in front stage. of a, an audience full of people with a belt. And like... Uh, uh, my wife watched it. She goes, I think that brought up a lot of trauma for a lot of people. Like, that was really weird. And that was really weird to see your dad not wanting to do it. And while my butt's hanging oh, out, yeah. and just going, hit me harder, daddy. Come on, put more muscle into it. Oh, he held back, too. Of course, because he's like, this is weird. Yeah, he was halfway. He's like in his 70s now. Yeah. I'm in my 30s. And he's just like, my butt is out. I'm just yeah. like, come on, dad. Comedy, dad, come on. <laughs> Let's grab uh, one last suggestion. Yeah, one last one. Blacking out. Blacking out. Uh, when was the last time you blacked out? Well, I've been sober for a while, so it hasn't happened in like 16 years, but um, the last time I was close to blacking out, I was again in Arizona State when I went to ASU, and um, I was dating a, Na a Native American girl named Ramona, and uh, I knocked on her apartment door, and um, this Japanese guy, we got in a tussle, and we got in a wrestling match, and I blacked out, and I ended up going to jail. 
Thanks for having me, folks. Keeping over CB Weeby. One more time for Stevie Weeby, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. All right, this next comedian coming to the stage. Uh, very excited to have her on. You may have seen her on Don't Tell Comedy. You may have seen her on The Tonight Show. Please welcome the amazing Catherine Blanford to the stage, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you coming out to the palace tonight. You didn't have to sell it out, and you did it. <laughs> Bring this over here in case we need to do some act outs, and I need an assistant. Um, okay, do we get into it? Do we just dive in? Okay, your crotch, that's there. All right. I like the confidence there. That's a Florida proposal position right there. Hey, do you want to forever? <laughs> okay, what do... <laughs> I wore a wedding dress, a Florida wedding dress for you guys. I dressed up for you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, what do we do? Do you guys... Do you want to just start? Some of you look like you've been waiting to torture me for years, you specifically. I feel like I shoved you into a locker at one point, metaphorically at one point. And, it, and I don't understand what metaphorical means. You're right about that. All right, give me something. Okay, um, uh, what did you say, TKs? I said the gays. The gays? <laughs> Ugh, don't get me fucking started. I'm sick of this shit. Um, I'm not gay yet. I will be. I plan to be in my 40s. But I do think, as, I don't think, I, I just think I'm too weak to be a, to be a gay right now. Uh, I just, because men, I feel like, you know, you can just uh, beat them down emotionally. And eventually they're just like, okay, I'm so tired. I'll st stay in and do what you say. But a woman, it's, it's emotional warfare every day of her life. We don't come with, by penetration. We come by winning an argument. And I don't think I would ever come with a woman because of that fact. Did you want me to talk about the guy, guy gays or the female gays? I, mean, I am a guy gay. You are a guy gay. Yes, you are. <laughs> Are, are you with these other lesbians? <laughs> and I said that, because they're men with long hair. <laughs> and Florida would love that joke. <laughs> Can I just point out, you, sir, okay, uh, that was a suggestion. And, and, but I just, I love, this is my favorite, this, only in Florida would you see, are you white? A, a little bit? Halfway. Halfway? Like, in that, do you mean like... <laughs> are you like, I'm mostly Polish, but a little me, of, a bit of me is Jewish, or are you like a different, not white? Mixed breed. Mixed breed, okay. Okay, I love it. Um, and I just love that you're mostly white. Is, are those dreads that you have? First of all, not only is he mostly white with dreads, but they are middle parted, and that's <laughs> fucking hilarious. What a fucking juxtaposition. Will you show them? Will you show them your middle part dreads to everybody? And it's also, it, it's cut like my hair and I am quintessential white. And, and somehow we have the same haircut, but not all at the same time. I feel like your name is like Ryan, you know? It's, it's like kind of a girl name, but also a guy name. Also like how you're white, but also white. All right. The gays, okay. Um, what, did, what else? Don't, I don't do politics, because I can't, I, I, don't, I don't even know if I'm gay, so I don't know what political parties there even are, so don't even go there, because I won't know what I'm saying. Beyonce. Beyonce? How did, shut the fuck up. How did you know? I just, if you go to my Instagram Explore page, it's all Beyonce. I'm so obsessed with Beyonce. 
I, this is not even gonna be funny, but I, if, if someone was like, what is your fetish? I would be like, I just wanna watch Beyonce have sex. <laughs> I'm so obsessed with her. I went to see the Beyonce, I was the only white girl in a group of 82 black women. Uh, to, and we all went as a group to see, to see the Beyonce, the, uh, the Renaissance, uh, the movie. There they are. Uh, <laughs> And I was the first one to start crying. <laughs> um, I, uh, I just want to know if she... I can't believe you said Beyonce. I'm so excited right now. I just want to know... Um, I just... It's just... I want to know if she's as sexual with Jay-Z as, the, as she talks about on stage. Do you know what I mean? Is it like all talk or, or, is, it, or, or is it really going on behind the partition wall? the part partition door. Um, I don't, I just, I don't, I, I'm such a fan of Beyonce that it, this isn't even funny because it's like, if you were, if you were a Christian and someone was like, talk about God and I'm like, I, I can't <laughs> make it funny because it's too spiritual and sexual for me to find anything funny about it. Um, I did, oh, okay, I will say this. Uh, so this is, this is how I dress, and this is who I am. And I went to the uh, Beyonce concert at SoFi Stadium, and it was, you're supposed to wear uh, whatever, it's like sequins, or I forget, what it, I forget what it's called. And my friend was like, hey, I found this romper. I wear a lot of rompers, and she found this romper for me, and it was from, from Fashion Nova. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a cute itty bitty little girl, but we got some thickness in like a tiny way and like a, th shut up, okay, Florida, shut the fuck up. And I'm thick for Idaho, okay? And, and so she found this Fashion Nova uh, romper for me and so I got a medium in it. And of course I didn't try it on till th two hours before I had to go to the concert. And so I ended up, I, like the, the top fit, the legs fit, but the crotch was down here, and my friend had to explain to me that it was a Fashion Nova medium, which meant it was for a black girl with an ass. And so, and I'm a white girl with nothing, so it just, all my ass was just loosely sagging in my crotch over here. Okay, that was um, not funny, and, <laughs> but that was fun. Okay, um, give me one more, give me one more quick. One night stand. One night stand, I said don't get political. <laughs> What did you say? Bruce, Bruce Carey? Miss Carriage. <laughs> no, no, no. We're going to go with Miss Carriage. <laughs> no, no, no. Just, and hear me out. Best possible solution, in my opinion. <laughs> There's too many people in this world. And what, what, what's a better message than, God himself, than Beyonce herself being like, <laughs> we don't need a white woman with no ass in this world. All right, what a way to call back. Thank you so much. Bring Jeremiah up here. Keep it going for Catherine Blanford, ladies and gentlemen. I like, I like how they gave the white woman Beyonce and gay. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what do you want my opinion on that for? <laughs> huh? Do we look like um, cousins? A little bit. 100%. 100%. <laughs> Heck yeah. I mean, yeah, definitely like one of those like bad family photos. Like, I, maybe, yeah. it's the, maybe it's the denim with, with like the, 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 the glitter star, but I definitely feel like we We call take, those like, rhinestones <laughs> in oh. Kentucky, the glitter stars. Sorry, I don't know. Don't insult me. My apologies. Yeah, but my I'm like apologies, this. miss. I'm like, look, it's me and my son. I had him when I was 14. This is my mom. I have weird thoughts about her. <laughs> and I go, shut up. I'm flattered. Still got it, honey. <laughs> uh, what do we got? Trailer Park. Trailer Park. Did you have any family in Trailer Park? I've got a uh, family uh, lives in a Trailer Park in Iowa um, that I grew up. I'd visit uh, going to the Trailer Park. Trailer Park in Iowa is just a family that started camping and was like, we never want to stop doing this. <laughs> it's like my family going on spring break and being yeah. like, let's just not stop this. Yeah. Can we keep this going forever? Yeah. <laughs> Trailer Park in Iowa, that's just a tiny house. 
It, it is. It's a tiny house on wheels that they never put the wheels on. It's just always up on blocks. Isn't that weird? <laughs> like, like, like people like get super stressed out when they see their car up on blocks because, like, you know, their their wheels got stolen. But like, people live without wheels on their houses all the time. <laughs> That's not comforting to anybody. (laughs) How many cars have you seen that somebody who stole the wheels put it on blocks? That seems like, I'm going to steal your shit, but I'm going to be nice enough to give it a stage. To let you get your life back together and build it piece by piece back together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, No, I never never had family uh, in a trailer park. Did I? No, I never really did. I just had like... I had like eight, like three families in one home. Okay. Like like they were like we're not gonna let you live in a trailer park. A Mexican trailer park. There you yeah, go. Yeah yeah yeah. My dad was one of ten, and it, the they had one bedroom for the kids and one bedroom for the parents, which was kind of mean for the parents. They're Whoa. like we're just gonna keep having kids, but, but we're you, not gonna share our bedroom. The litter's gotta figure it out like yeah, outside. Yeah of yeah here. yeah yeah yeah. Wow, that's pumping out a lot of children. Ten. Yeah, yeah, they had a lot of kids, and some of them would. Uh, so, oh, this was effed up. They would. Um, some of them would end up sleeping in the barn. This is trauma. Um, some of them would, because the was when the baby calves were born. My uncles would tell me they would have to sleep in the barn to raise the baby calves that the moms would um, uh, reject, and so they would raise the calves. And then when it was time to take them to market, that meant slaughter. Uh, they would have the, the calves, they'd have the, the sons that the calves would attach them to because they raised them. They, wouldn't, they would follow them onto the trailer because they wouldn't follow anyone else onto the trailer. Oh, so that, you, was a, that was a detached from a trailer park, but I just thought about trailer. So you have to bond with the cows just in order to slaughter them? Um, yeah, for them to, 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 to like, the, then they, rec- they became like their pseudo mom. And then the time for them to come on the trailer, they'd be like, I can't get this tra- the cow on the trailer. And they'd be like, Paul, go get your cow. And then, and then the cow would do what Paul said and it would get on the trailer and they'd go kill it Whoa. for dinner. Yeah, one guy was into that. The rest of the, the, rest of the crowd is like, even for Florida, that's pretty dark. <laughs> that's a lot to unpack right there. That's a lot to unpack. Wow, that's crazy. I don't know why I went there. I why I went there, but uh, I um, I just I don't know. I think about how country people like they're they're just more they're 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 okay with murder a lot more than city people are because they've been used to murdering their loved ones and eating them their whole lives. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Did your family ever murder anyone? Has my family ever hurt anyone? Murdered. Murdered anyone? Uh, no, just, you know, just, I guess some animals and stuff like that, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I grew up in Kansas, so there's hunting and, and stuff, like in Kansas and Missouri, that's like pretty standard. Yeah, you've probably murdered, someone's murdered somebody in your family, if it's from Kansas. Probably. We're probably hiding something really dark. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. for sure. Yeah. I don't know how, where it got there, but. Let's grab, uh, let's grab one more suggestion. Doctors. Lifetime movies. Doctors, Lifetime movies. Lifetime movies, uh, I love for the bold acting choices <laughs> that always ha- Because in a Lifetime movie, people will do, they'll throw like, okay, like most actors like will go straight down the middle, maybe a curveball, but like Lifetime movies are like the slider, the knuckleball pitch, where it's just like, like I caught you with my brother. Wait, I'm so sorry. I think you're watching Lifetime porn. He, he, <laughs> Lifetime movies isn't I Caught You With My, is that Lifetime movies? It can totally be. That, like The storylines are all over the place. The storylines are all over the place in Lifetime movies. Wait, Lifetime movies is like, I'm a city girl who's just sick and tired of being successful. I'm gonna go date my ex-boyfriend who still runs a postcard shop. In Idaho, Kansas City. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, that's one version of the lifetime. I feel like there's also some darker storylines that are taking I place. I feel there. like you're getting confused with your you porn lifetime membership. <laughs> Am I wrong? Lifetime movies are more like like the like the lifetime uh, uh, Christmas movies or like the no, city yeah, successful. Yeah, the holiday girl. movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The successful businessman goes back home to to visit his family. And, and learns that he shouldn't have discredited them and, you know, he has a story arc kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, but you were like, <laughs> wait, wait, but you were like, I caught you with my brother. Because there's also <laughs> Lifetime movies that are like that as well. 
where there's like weird drama for no reason and like the acting choices are bizarrely off where they just take moments and they're like, I bet you thought I knew about it for this long time, don't you? And, and you're just watching and being like, what? Did they just drop the line or are they just stuttering right now? Like what's happening? I think you um, took out the word movies from that suggestion and you were just like, this is my lifetime. <laughs> Guys, keep it going for Catherine Blanford. Hey, thank you! All right, we have a couple comics left. How's the energy doing in here, huh? I love this next guy's work. Uh, you can catch a lot of his uh, social media videos online popping off, and he's got an amazing podcast called Bonding. Please welcome the great Troy Bond to the stage, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. Come on. Hey, sorry I did this. That was very gay. I walked out. Hey, Ron DeSantis is going to arrest me as soon as I get off stage. This feels fun. This feels like uh, you guys are a bunch of uh, stuffed animals. Welcome. I've never uh, come to a comedy show and asked for suggestions, so uh, this will be a fun time to uh, crash and burn. Uh, I'm looking at you, and like you, you, you four look like you're in a way different tax bracket than I am. So like, your suggestion will be like, talk about Roth IRAs. I don't know what the fuck that is. Thank you. If that's a suggestion, I got Whitney Houston jokes. If I were Whitney Houston's manager, I would have given her swimming lessons. <laughs> and her daughter. It runs in the family. Next! Friendship bracelet. What happened? Friendship bracelet. So these are actually anal beads? You could probably smell them from there. Uh, people started giving me these on tour because I've reminded them so much of Taylor Swift. Uh, Mostly because of how closetedly racist I am. Um, <laughs> a lot of Taylor fans in the audience. Uh, friendship bracelets are nice. Like, if it's a way of, of it's, it's like a prison tattoo, you know? It never goes away, and after a while, you stop looking at it. And eventually, you'll drop the soap. Uh, <laughs> why did I sign up to do this show? I feel like half of you are here because your probation dictates it. The other half, are waiting for James Bond to show up because you're his arch villain. Who else? Uh, uh, shot these words out. You guys were talking to them. Now you're acting like Helen Keller with me, goddammit. <laughs> what happened? Music festivals. Music festivals? Great place to get chlamydia. And also pointless. Like, why are we doing Burning Man when we know the earth is on fire? <laughs> like, all, you guys know everybody got stranded in Burning Man last year. They're like, oh my God, shit's on fire. We don't have water. And I went, good. <laughs> That's called evolution, survival of the fittest. Your parents' money isn't gonna save you from dehydration. I don't care how many dreadlocks or tattoos you have. When I see white people with dreadlocks, I get mad. My dad is black and I see white people with dreadlocks and every one of them, do you have dreadlocks? Oh, I'm sorry, dog, my bad. I stand by what I said. Each dread represents a time a woman told him no. Or it could represent every day he hasn't showered. <laughs> Next. What happened? The Island Boys. You just got them. The Island Boys, those dudes in Florida who, are, who may or may not have been Epstein victims. You guys know the Island Boys? The Island Boy. Uh, that, my only thoughts on them are is it makes me feel less successful than I am because I blew up on TikTok and so did they. <laughs> All I had to do was just get a bunch of chest tattoos and say ignorant shit. That's the difference between me and the Island Boys is I wasn't molested at Jeffrey Epstein's Island. I had them molested, just not there. Try humping. Try humping? Wow, how'd you come up with that one? <laughs> Dry humping is great if you want to fuck a sheet of sandpaper. That's what it feels like. They're not all going to be zingers. I'm coming up with them on the spot. I got the one dude from Black Eyed Peas who no one knows who their name is in the corner not laughing at me. She got me spended. You're the guy who goes, oh. Millennials. Millennials? Uh, what is this, 2011? <laughs> 
Uh, millennials are uh, uh, one step above me. I'm on like the cusp. I'm Gen Z, but like, I'm, I'm like a black Republican. I don't like to tell people that I, I'm on the cusp, but like, you know. Millennials are, are uh, 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 sad. They're sad. They're losing their shit right now because they thought if they went to college and, and made enough money, they could buy a home, and then they bought the home, and nobody wants to fuck them. That's why we all got Tinder. And when no one wants to fuck them, they buy a dog, and then that makes them happy for like 10 years. Then the dog dies, and they get addicted to Oxy. So like... <laughs> That's why so many people in Gen Z do this. They're like, fuck this shit, man. Capitalism, I'm, at least, I'm gonna go perform for 12 of my closest friends at this deleted scene from The Irishman. This feels like where R. Kelly would bring victims before he hogtied them. Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back. You know I'm a Star Wars fan because I've never had sex before. Uh, here's the thing about Star Wars. The grand plan was for Obi-Wan and Yoda to gaslight Luke into killing his own father after the government dictated their religion a threat. We should do that in Florida because we got to kick the Scientologists out of clear water. That shit is not working no more. It's also fucked up that there's one black guy in Star Wars and he's the one that betrayed the white guy. When I broke up with my ex, I would send her the video of ha Lando going, how you doing, Chewbacca? Because <laughs> she never shaved her vagina. Anyway, that's not why we broke up. I loved it, man. Indiana Jones is one of my favorite movies. Every time I was about to eat her out, I went, shing. <laughs> Any others? Anime. What happened? Anime. Anime. I just watched Attack on Titan. That was... I, I've never seen it before, loved it, till the last episode, then I realized it was all about Nazis. <laughs> Attack on Titan, if you haven't seen it, you don't need to know anything about it, other than the show, you root for the bad guy the whole time, until the last episode, you realize, oh shit, I was rooting for the bad guy. It's kind of like what we did in Vietnam, you know? Like, we're like, yeah! And then we're like, oh shit, we, mm, damn. Some of those kids deserve to live. They were just living in villages. Spider-Man? Spider I'm like Spider-Man, man. man. I've, always, I've always identified with Spider-Man. Cause like, he never has his shit together. He kinda wants to fuck his aunt. I'm like, this, this dude just like me. We both be blasting ropes all over the place. Who? Pyramid schemes. Pyramid schemes. Uh, well, the pyramids were built by aliens. That's the first scheme. You know what I think happened? I think dinosaurs and aliens had like a civil war type fight. Cause like I was watching this video of a bird. They say birds descended from dinosaurs. And the bird was like telling his life story. It was like burr, 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 burr. And that shit sounded like dinosaurs fighting aliens. And, and uh, now pyramid schemes are what they use to keep Mexican mothers in poverty. They're like, yeah, try isogenics. Uh, the movie or just the color? The movie. Because I could riff on both. Uh, the new one, I haven't seen because I don't fuck with Oprah anymore. She betrayed Michael Jackson. Fuck you, Oprah. I, I liked her better when she was fat. Now she just owns everything and, and remaking shit we already saw before. She should have made a movie called The Color. I'm going to pretend I didn't know Harvey Weinstein for all those years. That's what she should have called that movie. You need to go to therapy, brother. Uh, <laughs> prison, okay. Uh, I feel like this is a town hall and I'm Nikki Haley. <laughs> uh, okay, here's the thing about prison. I'm against it. I've been to jail once. Uh, yeah, dog. <laughs> Wasn't for anything cool. I was drinking a beer in public and they, they got my ass. Uh, that shit sucked. They put me in a cell with this dude who looked like Terry Crews, and the officer was like, ask him what he did. Bond! Ask him what he did. He kept calling me Bond, like we were in the mob for 20 years. Hey, Bond, hey! The fuck, why don't you fucking ask this dude what he did, huh? Ask him what he did. Ask him why he's in there, Bond! I go, I would rather not make friends in prison right now. And he's like, no, all right, I'll tell you. He tried to stick his in an 11-year-old boy. I was like, I look like an 11-year-old boy. I'm gonna be quiet as shit. 
Then they took me to jail. I was there uh, Memorial Day weekend. They arrested me on a Friday. And at first, I'm like, this is going to be a good bit one day. I'm going to come up with a good bit. We're pulling off. Biggie starts playing. I'm in handcuffs. I'm like, this is my shit, man. I fucking made it. Hell yeah. <laughs> They're filling out my paperwork while, while we're in the car. They're like, what's your race? I said, my dad's black, my mom is white. And the guy went, just write Caucasian. And I almost corrected him. But then I was like, that'll get me out sooner. He's <laughs> like, I'm actually Irish. Uh, and then uh, I did not like jail. Um, I'll tell you a little secret about jail. Full of criminals, it's scary. Uh, and uh, I got out and now I go to jails every single month to perform for them to let them know how to escape uh, because I found a little backdoor entrance. But fuck jail, uh, it's, it's racist. Jail is racist. That's, I know we're in Florida and you guys love that shit, but go home, watch a documentary called The 13th. Jail exists because when slavery ended, they didn't know how to lock up black people for not doing anything anymore. So they just a bunch of white dudes got on Red Dead Redemption horses and started looking for black guys crossing the street without looking both ways and went, going to jail for 40 years, back in chains, bitch. I didn't say these some be, be, be jokes. Some of these are just real. Uh, come on out, Jeremiah. Get me out of this race war. I want to get Jeremiah's logo tattooed on my taint. And like have the mic be right where the hole is. So the first time I try, yeah, right there. Yeah, no, whoever goes on next, I hope, don't smell the microphone. <laughs> Guys, keep it going for Troy Bond. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thanks for being here. Jeremiah and I shared a cell. Yeah. It he was, was in there for child. I was in there for beer drinking. <laughs> Thanks, oh, you guys man. Don't like child jokes? <laughs> oh, you guys are over that? <laughs> no, they're over all of this. <laughs> they're like, we can't do a show to watch, not to participate, motherfucker. <laughs> well, look, My name's Matt Reif, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's... Miss, I felt you get wet when I said that. That was fantastic. The pH levels went up 2%. Yeah, I thought the, uh, the fire sprinkler systems were going off in here. Yeah, it is. It, it was coming from her. Just sprinkle yeah. in the face. I didn't know you was a squirter, baby. Only in cases of fire safety. <laughs> I told them not to put me on this show. I'm schizophrenic. It, it's perfect. You're I thought you were Pitbull, dog. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's like not Mr. Worldwide, but Mr. Domestic Flight. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's the Spirit, spirit Airlines of uh, Pitbull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's, he's the ghost of spirit of Christmas past. I love you, dog. I just want to kiss your head so my dreams come true. Can I? You can. Oh, fuck it. Yeah. Oh, kiss that head. Kiss that head. Kiss it. Oh. I caught some of his memories, too. The last thing he thought was, no one's going to know I'm bald. <laughs> my man, thank you. What's your name? I'm going to get that tattooed on my... Dude, what if you went to go kiss his head and it was like that Harry Potter, like Voldemort in the back of it? Like, hey, Harry Potter! Harry Potter! Harry Potter is like a Star Wars for dudes who want to be school shooters. Okay. Oh, that's all J.K. Rowling did was she copy and pasted Star Wars and she made billions of dollars and goes on Twitter every day talking about trans people. I'm like, shut the fuck up, J.K. What do you mean you don't understand how one day a woman could be ja Jill and the next day she's Jack? What do you mean you don't understand that shit? You wrote Slytherin. That's not a real thing. But in the world of magic, that doesn't exist. Especially in the state of Florida. <laughs> well, they, they say that uh, the don't, Dumbledore's gay. They allude to it in, in the, uh, the books and stuff. Oh, so we know he's in hell. That's good. <laughs> Bible's uh, pretty clear about that. Let's grab, a, let's grab a suggestion, see what we can do with it. DeSantis, that dude is gay as shit, man. You gotta be very fucking gay to sue Disney. Your Honor, ho oh, ho, that shit is gay. You ever listen to somebody that's homophobic? They sound very gay. I can't stand to think of two men having sex with each other. Dog, you would think about that shit, though. For the rest of us, it's Friday. For you, it's dudes dicks and butts running that hamster wheel. And he's wearing those cowboy boots to make him look five, six. I was waiting for him and Trump to debate. That'd be like watching Michael Jackson go up against a Michael Jackson impersonator. <laughs> and now him and Nikki Haley are running so they could be second place in the dumbass contest. 
I know some of you guys are gonna vote for him and I wanted you to hear that before you did. <laughs> because you're wrong. I, I wonder if in Florida, like, instead of Santa Claus, they have DeSantis Claus. That like, do you still believe in him? Do you still think that he can do good things? <laughs> Are your parents gay? Because if so, you're not getting presents. <laughs> I'm gonna shove coal right up their stockings because I heard they're into that. And so am I. Uh, let's grab another suggestion over here. Stephen Hawking, only fans. What if Stephen Hawking had? Fans. No, wait, we can't. Well, then he would still be on Epstein's Island, so it doesn't matter. You know, Hawking was on the, the OnlyFans uh, only list, <laughs> the Epstein list. Well, all, which OnlyFans is kind of like, you know, Epstein, but like with much younger children and nobody could send it to it. Uh, but Stephen Hawking was on that list. That's what makes me believe that there's a God. Because he was like, this dude got a big brain, but he's also a pedophile. Let me ball him up. The silver lining of Stephen Hawking being on File Island is, is, at least we know it was handicap accessible. I love, I stopped watching months ago because it, it just, it feels creepy. You, you, you watch I, I'm taking a hiatus. <laughs> what happened? Did you, did you jerk off and you were like, there's an asshole right here. Let me just press the fun button. No. And you were like, that felt too fun. I gotta stop. You know, you know what it was? 100%. I went into a spa that I didn't know was was uh, gonna be as wild as it was. And, and then there, you went, oh, I don't need No, 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 it was dudes, it was a room full of dudes jerking off, and for whatever reason, since I, I walked into that, I haven't been able to watch Oh, I'm immune to that, man. I was on the swim team. That shit happened all the time. Just dudes in the locker room just No, they then? would do circle jerks in the shower and just let it happen, man. Really? All the time, yeah. The, the swim teams, the that swimmers like that? were letting the swimmers out. We had to shut down the school like three times because the pipes got clogged with cum. <laughs> they just keep draining the pool over and over. It's like, over. did somebody poop in the pool? Like yeah, a, somebody pooped in the pool. Yeah, there that's what a, it was. There was enough cum in the pipes that they thought a rat died in it. Do you think it was holding the structural integrity of the school together after a while? Like it was like the like, cum was, yeah, yeah because yeah, yeah. it started to mutate with the roots, and they were like, "Kill me, <laughs> guys!" Keep it going for Troy Bond. The Sand is twenty twenty four. Thank you. Yeah. All right, are you guys ready for your final comedian of the night? What do you say, huh? Your next comedian is coming all the way to you from New York City. She has an amazing podcast called Only Fee Hands. Please welcome the great Karen Feehan to the stage, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. Hi, guys. Keep it going for Jeremiah and all the comics you guys have seen. And now it's your turn, right? You're supposed to give me suggestions? DVDs. DVDs? Why don't you just call me old to my face? Why? <laughs> this is Gucci. <laughs> Do you guys like an in-store shopping experience? Yeah? I like in-store because they learn your names. It's kind of like you get a boyfriend right away. They'll text you the next day, too, like, hey, Miss Fian, how's the weather? I just start sending them nudes. <laughs> like, let me get a discount. <laughs> All right, what else? Dick pics. Dick pics. Send them on in. <laughs> Don't stop the flood. I love a dick pic. I love an uncircumcised dick. Oh, that quieted you guys, you fucking... <laughs> Clap if you're uncircumcised. <laughs> See, they can do it with their dicks. <laughs> I love an uncircumcised dick pic because it's almost like two dick pics in one. It's like he's hiding and then you swipe. There he is. <laughs> How long are the bits that people usually do? Because. I feel like so far I'm nailing this format. <laughs> Come on, give me something else. 
I love how hard you guys have to work. This is good. <laughs> tramp stamps? Well, you guys need a bullseye, right? I don't think there's anything wrong with a tramp stamp. I, supp I suppose it depends on what the tramp stamp is. If I was like a whore nowadays, I would get a QR code. <laughs> right, you get your Venmo right there. You put your Amazon wish list below that. <laughs> I think that was my best one yet. Nightclubs. Nightclubs. That guy's gay. <laughs> Copacabana, go. <laughs> Tell me your favorite cabaret. What do you do in the nightclubs? I don't drink, so I don't go to like nightclubs. I think it would be kind of weird if I did, unless I was like a serious ballroom dancer, I'm trying to really like show my moves. I used to go to nightclubs. I used to be a bottle service girl. That's just a volunteer for sexual assault, really. <laughs> I was a bottle service girl. This company was called EMRG. What the fuck did it stand for? Event Marketing Research Group. It was just a bunch of greedy Jewish guys fucking <laughs> running the New York nightclubs. I used to get really hammered and do blow. I was a waitress and I would, <laughs> I would come into work with like really c congested after like doing blow all night. But I'd tell my boss that I had allergies. <laughs> He'd be like, what are you allergic to? I'm like, cocaine, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> you should fire me. <laughs> I'm stealing, I'm stealing. <laughs> okay, what else? Yoga and, retreats. Yoga retreats. It sounds like a guy who leads one. <laughs> You're inviting me to yours? I would, sorry? Did you want to yell something? Downward dog. Downward dog, oh, now you're getting specific. You're like, I'm gonna out-gay the nightclub guy. <laughs> Downward dog is great. I work out a lot. I work out a lot so I can stay calm pretty much. <laughs> Downward dog. Downward dog is great unless you're on your period. <laughs> right, ladies? <laughs> It's like, did I just put my nose up a penny fountain? What am I? There's so many other struggles. Maybe it's hard, or is it hard for you men too? Because you're a stinky ball sack? Because if you're doing downward dog properly, you're pretty close to your crotch. All right. What? If somebody, somebody who hasn't yelled out a suggestion yet tonight, somebody who's like too shy to do it, that's who I want a suggestion from. Who are you? You? Salsa, salsa dancing. I can see why you haven't spoken up yet. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> What a c Oh my God, I am such a mean salsa dancing. Uh, I'll tell you what, I wanted to go salsa dancing. I date MMA guys, like, like exclusively. Um, and I said, that I, wanted, I was thinking about salsa dancing. I was like, babe, we should take dance lessons. And the guy looked at me and he goes, I will smoke you. <laughs> so I don't feel like it's in my future. Those kids are fucking, those are too sexy, those kids, right? Those fucking young Latino kids. Those like nine-year-old girls have like fatter asses and bigger tits than me. I'm like, <laughs> they're too young to be knowing how to move their pelvises like that. Sometimes it's not the pedophile's fault. <laughs> Nobody's talking. I was thinking about this today. I like how salsa dancing quickly went to pedophilia. I was thinking about this. I was a slutty little kid. Any other women in here consider themselves slutty young girls? Th thank you, slut. I mean like eight years old, and there were guys like doing construction on my house. And I would go up to my room, put a bikini on, tell my mom to make popcorn, and I would go and throw popcorn at them. 
It's not always their fault, you guys. Because I remember my mom would like make fun of me and kind of tease me like, oh my God, look at her. She doesn't know what she's doing. She's being crazy. I'm like, I know exactly what I'm fucking doing. <laughs> I'm going to bag a construction worker. <laughs> okay, that fizzled. Anything else? <laughs> Sorry? Presidential ah, the presidential candidates. Well, not in some states, right? <laughs> I'm rich, so I vote differently than you guys. <laughs> um, I think that Nikki Haley lady's pretty fucking nuts, dude. She's, uh, she's Indian, and she doesn't really lead with that at all. I think she should. I think she should. Who else? What'd you say? Shotgun wedding. Are you having one? <laughs> That's what happens when you knock the girl up, right? <laughs> yeah. I figure at that point, if you're going to share the expenses of a human life, you might as well get into bed like, with all your finances. So, yeah, get married. <laughs> Sorry, I'm answering this just earnestly. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I didn't really like that suggestion. Does anybody have a good one? A cookout. Is that, are you implying that I would not be invited to said cookout? <laughs> I used to date my hip hop teacher, I'll have you know. <laughs> I used to call me Vanilla Power. <laughs> I actually dated black twins for a while. I know, they were identical. People were like, which one are you dating? I'm like, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> How the fuck am I supposed to know? It was fun dating a twin. That's like a BOGO. <laughs> they tricked me one time. Whatever. I, uh, <laughs> I like fucking black guys. They're fucking hot. Black guys, MMA guys. Okay, I, I got a light, so I feel like I have time for one to two more suggestions. Roofie. What was it? Roofies. Roofies. Roofie. No? <laughs> You said groupie. Here's the problem. The fat, gross boy comics get all the groupies. <laughs> it's so interesting. Like, the more obese they are, like, the hotter the girls are. It's... I don't get groupie. I wouldn't mind one if he knew how to, like, vacuum and do the dishes and everything. <laughs> boy groupies are different. It's a tough dynamic, you know what I mean? It's hard to respect a guy if I'm, like, sending him out to do my chores. That didn't go anywhere. I want one more. Uh, does someone have a redemption suggestion for me? <laughs> Sephora. Sephora, greatest place on earth to shoplift from. <laughs> I owe Sephora thousands of dollars. But this is gonna lead me into another story. Recently I was stolen from. A fan sent me a $400 sweatsuit to the comedy club I work at the most in New York. It's called The Stand, you guys should check it out. And I was like, where's this package, where's this package? I walk into work Monday night and the five foot 11, 22 year old hostess is wearing my size extra small sweatsuit. It's like a fucking Larry David sketch. Came up to her elbows and her shins. I'm like, that's my fucking sweatsuit. She goes, hey, it's, no, it's not, I guess, cause I'm wearing it. <laughs> it's like, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. I'm gonna physically fight you. She texted me this whole thing. I'm sorry, I'll wash it. I'm like, you're gonna send me a new one, you fucking felon. <laughs> All right, that's it for me. Bring Jeremiah up to help me. There you are. Thank you, Jeremiah, for helping me. Keep it going for Karen Feehan, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's see what we can do. <laughs> So fun. Yeah, right? Thank you for having me. I thought I'd give us some playing I thought you'd space. Give it, yeah. You know? Get a little wild with her. I get worried about the reverb. All right. It's oh, okay. It's we right. did a thorough sound check before. <laughs> pretty thorough did. before we started. Yeah, that's, that's I did, did you see the fog at the top of the show? <laughs> we did it pretty thorough. That's why these mics smell like this. <laughs> no. Oh, that's, that's a real thing that happens with comedians is like sometimes they don't, they're not clean people. So like... <laughs> 
<laughs> they're, they're just they're just not. And then like you talk on a mic, and then a lot of times at venues, uh, they won't clean the mics like in between shows. Yeah. So all of a sudden, you'll sometimes like hit your bottom lip with the mic, and then you're like, "Do I need to cut this off yes. now?" Or you have to remove your bottom lip. Yeah, it's soaked with the DNA. Yeah, of a pig. <laughs> Uh, let's grab a suggestion, see let's, what we can do with it. Let's grab one. Traditional gender roles. <laughs> Traditional gender roles? Um, I, I like my girls thick, you know, those, those, those roles, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have an eye fan, so I'm a real trad wife type. I'm real submissive. Traditional gender roles. Are you, are you, are you... Pro, like you're just wanting the tr- traditional ones, or are you open to the idea of there being more than the two genders out there? All, you're open to all. You're open to all, brother. Well, I don't know if I identify as a brother, so <laughs> you need to be cool with your language to me, okay? So chill out where this guy is trying to be an ally, and then. <laughs> you can come to the cookout, huh? <laughs> he dropped one brother, and they're like, welcome home. <laughs> You're in. <laughs> oh, yeah, traditional gender roles. There's a trans person at my gym. Okay, so do, which bathroom do they use? Is, it, is there, uh, okay, so. Mine. This guy is fucking huge, though. No, I'm sorry, I know it's a woman or whatever, but he'll take my bar classes, and there's a move called the clamshell, and the guy's in just so much pain because he's just smashing his balls together the whole class. And he's like wincing. I don't know. He can come in my locker room or whatever, but. He's like, they're, they're like closing their legs yeah. over and over. They're like, I will turn this pearl into a diamond. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> totally. Uh, butt chugging. Butt chugging. Butt wow. chugging. That um, guy had a you, really you, professional you know the- frat career. <laughs> Yeah, I guess, uh, apparently you can get really drunk off of butt chug. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can get drunk off of anything, like alcoholic, right? Why does the butt juice add to the... I think it's just is more the novelty of yeah. like you, you seeing the beer <laughs> disappear <laughs> okay. like the worst magic trick ever. Yeah. It absorbs alcohol better. It absorbs the alcohol absorbs. better? Okay, our butthole scientist is on the scene right now. Oh Thank you for reporting live. Actually, this just in, the beer in my butthole. I'm a medical doctor. This is my professional opinion. I have such a tiny asshole. I feel like whatever amount goes up there is coming out like Old Faithful real fast. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I have a dainty little butthole. <laughs> I just feel like I'm sharding shots at people if that's what we're doing. Yeah. But I would do it. I mean, my butthole's so tight, it's like one of those old school Play-Doh things where you push it down and then it just, one little squiggly just- Squiggly. <laughs> just I, the back. My poop looks like linguine. <laughs> That's nice, Jeremiah. <laughs> Butt chugging. That was but, a great suggestion, sir. Yeah. He um, had that one in the can all night. <laughs> I will say for a, like, a, like a dare, like a challenge thing, I did, a, I did hot sauce up the butthole and that is, the worst, yeah. one of the worst things I've ever done in my life. I bet, because even like hot sauce going in regular coming out downtown, that's a spicy ordeal. Yeah, imagine my vomits later that night. Yuck, Jeremiah, brutal. <laughs> it came up from the, yeah. your insides are, you're like a human centipede. <laughs> this is so gross. You really are like a real Gumby. Oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I'm pretty flexible. Yeah, you're like an octopus. You could probably fit through the holes of a boat like those octopuses. Have you seen, seen those videos? The only thing that wouldn't fit through is my nose. It would get trapped. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like pushing like through or like all of it, and then they're just like, oh, what is going on with this part right here? It's just like a nose sticking up out of a ship. <laughs> they try to patch it's just like, through. what is going on there? <laughs> get out of here. Uh, cool. Let's grab uh, one last suggestion. IBTC. What is that? Itty bitty titty committee. Oh, I'm the president. Are you the treasurer? <laughs> we love little titties. Little titties are the best. No offense to your giant cans out there, ladies, but little youthful, stay perky titties, they're the best. 
I told the chick at Victoria's Secret my bra size. She was like, we don't sell batteries here, you little <laughs> idiot. Guys, here we go for Karen Feehan, so ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> One more time for Karen Feehan. That was Stand Up On The Spot. Did we have a good time tonight? Yeah. Keep it going for all the comedians that you saw. Yeah. And keep it going for me, Jeremiah Watkins, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Watch this show every other Monday on YouTube at youtube.com slash at standupots. And if you ever find yourself in Los Angeles, we're live at the Comedy Store every second Tuesday of the month. I love you. Have a great night. Thank you so much, Florida. Thanks so much for watching Stand Up On The Spot. 73% of the viewers of this channel in the last month are not subscribed. So if you're one of those people, how about you subscribe today? And make sure you leave a like and a comment before you go. Thanks for the support. And tune in every other Monday for new episodes on this channel.